I want to speak to you the message that the Lord gave me, I don't know, a month or so ago. And uh, the last couple weeks, uh, the Lord had other arrangements, and I didn't, didn't uh, get to preach it. And I'm always very comfortable with what the Lord's doing here because, um, um, because it's the Lord's work, right? And uh, God never makes a mistake. And uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm happy to wait on the Lord. But this, the word of the Lord is from the uh, Proverbs chapter 18, verses 10 and 11. I want to talk to you today about the believer's confidence. The writer says, The name of the Lord is a strong tower, and the righteous run into it, and they are safe. How many of you want to be safe this morning? Well, there's a way to be safe. We run into the, the Lord, into his tower of safety, and trust in his name. His name is above every name. And every other name has to bow before him. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the word of the Lord today that will go forth. We believe it is your word. We believe that you have prepared hearts so that the ground of every heart will receive the eternal word of God today. And I pray, Father, that your word would go forth with clarity, without hindrance, without distractions. In the name of Jesus, that you would give us ears to hear what the Spirit is saying unto us. Go beyond the words of my mouth, Lord, into the ears of your people and arouse and stir within them the hope and the truth that you want to bring them today so that your people would be equipped with every good work and every good word and what you have for them in the name of Jesus that it will accomplish what you want it to accomplish today and we'll thank you and give you praise so that we can be empowered to serve you and accomplish in this world what you have for us to accomplish until you take us away to be with you in Jesus name. Amen. So the name of the Lord is a strong tower. Where do you go when you are in trouble? Well, people go to a lot of different sources when they're in trouble. And a lot of those sources uh, do not bring us the remedy and the help that we have need of. But when we go to God, I've learned, and you've heard me say this before, God is pretty smart. In fact, he's smarter than we are. And when we go to God, he will tell us what we need to do, and he will undergird us so that we can do what we need to do. So I want to talk to you about the believer's confidence, that the name of the Lord is a strong tower, and the righteous ones of God run to it, and they are safe. Perhaps you have, uh, you have heard... And had times when you, you've heard of other people having times and you've had times when you yourself have placed confidence in someone that uh, have let, has let you down. It could be that, that uh, you trusted in uh, a friend, you could have trusted in a contract, you could have trusted in a job. Have you ever bought a car and put your trust in it? Have you ever relied on a friend and took their word and trusted in it? Even your closest friends sometimes will let you down. Why? Because we are all human and none of us are perfect. Only God is perfect. Only God can keep his word perfectly all the time. Even though we are to be people of our word, we are weak as human beings. And I say that we all have clay feet. Yes? We all have clay feet. Sometimes we fall down when we ought to be standing up. And sometimes we sit down when we ought to be walking. So sometimes we let our own selves down. Sometimes we let other people down. And sometimes other people let us down. But I want to tell you this morning, God will never let us down. God will never make a wrong decision concerning us. God will never make a mistake. It is impossible for God to fail because he is God. Sometimes confidence placed in the wrong person or cause can cause us an extreme amount of pain. 
Yes, we have pain sometimes when people don't mean to create pain or we don't mean to create pain, but pain happens in this life because we live in a fallen world. We, work, we walk among fallen people and we ourselves have been touched with sin and weakness. At times, even the best people will let us down. Anybody here ever not let someone down? We all have, haven't we? We all have let others down. People that we love and we never want to, to let them down. Sometimes we let them down. And so what do we do? Well, we give mercy because we have to have mercy. Amen? We cannot control uh, the fact that we're all going to disappoint and we're all going to be disappointed in people and things and stuff of the world. But God will never let us down. God is our remedy. God is our strong tower. God is our source. And when we place anyone else in the position that God himself and only himself needs to be, we will be confounded, we will be disappointed. So God uh, helps us in, in our difficult times to see where sometimes we've replaced a certain thing, uh, or even our own ambitions or pleasures or whatever, or people in his place. And God wants us to be aligned to where he is our God. You know, we can make a good friend. We can make a, 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 a good employer. We can be a good employer. We can be a good husband. We can be a good wife. We, we can be a good son or a good, good daughter, a good boss. But we cannot, none of us can be a good God. Only God is God. God, his name is the I am. He is the alpha, the omega, the beginning and the end. He is the all-powerful one. He's the only one who is all-powerful and ever-knowing and all-present. Only God can be that. Sometimes we wish people could be that because we can see people, we can touch their skin, but only God can be that. He is the creator of heaven and earth. He is the creator of all things and all people. He is complete within himself and he needs nothing. He needs uh, no one. God doesn't need us. He's complete in himself, but he loves us and his love is incomprehensible. It's unending, it's unexplainable. And his love will not quit in crisis or when we mess up or when we get dirty. His love doesn't quit. God will never run out on you. God doesn't, God doesn't quit loving. He is love. That's the one word that describes him. God is love. He is God all by himself. He's bigger than any of our problems. It doesn't matter how big your giant is. It doesn't matter how big your problem is. God is still bigger. He has fought more battles than you and I can comprehend. He has brought more reconciliations than we can imagine. He has healed more bodies than science can explain and more, of the, and, and more than the greatest mathemat mathematician can calculate. He will never let you down. He will not and cannot fail. He cannot lie and he cannot de deny himself and his divinity. He is and he wants to be our friend. He wants to be our Savior and our Lord. And he will be to each one who invites him. When we invite him into our life and we place our whole confidence in him, we will not be confounded. We will not be ashamed. We will not be left high and dry. Have you ever been left high and dry? Y'all know what that means. You ever been left high and dry? Somebody promised you, promised you, promised you. And you've been left high and dry. Yeah, we probably all have been left high and dry. But I'm going to tell you, God will not leave you high and dry. He, will, he said he will never leave. He will never forsake you. He will go with you all the way to the end. There are times that we don't, do not feel him. We don't understand. We don't understand why God... into him and they are safe. Praise God. You see, God doesn't want to be your 
He doesn't want to be your part-time friend. He wants you to trust him completely. He wants you to put all of your eggs in his basket. Listen, either God is God or he isn't. Either God tells the truth or he doesn't. Savior. He wants to be our, lo- our Lord. And He wants us to invite Him into the whole of our life. As you grow in God and you have these experiences you learn that when the next problem comes you remember that God was faithful in the past like Israel if it had not been for the Lord who was on our side they say and they, they, they recounted the faithfulness of God they recounted the times when when they were absolutely I get up against it. It was life or death. And they were up against it. But God. Some of you may feel that that's where you are today. But God is for you. And he is not going to run out on you. The people that know their God shall be strong and do exploits. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. And the righteous run into it and is safe. Then the writer says a rich man's wealth is a strong city. And a high wall like his own imagination. Did you get that? A high wall like his own imagination. We can trust in a lot of things, but we need to trust in God. The name of the Lord in this proverb is Yahweh or Jehovah in Greek. He is the self-existing one. This was God's covenant name with Israel. The name revealed to Moses at the burning bush as I am. And you can see that in the book of Exodus chapter 3, verse 13 through 15. God is trustworthy. How many of you know that God is trustworthy? Have you proved him? Then we don't have to be shaken. Why? Because we trust in our God. If God did it before, he can do it again. Because he is an unchanging God. He never changes. 
He's not going to get stronger and he's not going to get weaker. You say, well, you don't think he can get stronger? No, because he's already perfect. You cannot improve on perfection. There's a great importance in knowing God as our true source of help. And he invites us to call upon him in our time of need. Again and again, the scripture invites us to call upon the Lord in our time. bombarded and confused is sometimes we think well if God's with us and if God's for us why am I having all this difficulty I remember somebody else getting in that answer asked that kind of question if you're with us then why about all these things but God didn't say that there would not be trouble we live in a fallen world I wish Adam and Eve hadn't hadn't blew it but they did but God is merciful we've blown it too if they hadn't we probably would <laughs> but but God uh, his ways he doesn't always make things easy for us but he does make them possible he makes them bearable for us for whatever we need I want you to listen and savor the scripture somebody needs to put a put a, a bookmark in your Bible or or something so you can you can come back to this Psalm 91 it will help you in your time of need if you're struggling if you're fighting if you're in a war um, you, you need to read this maybe you need to read it on a daily basis maybe you need to read it a few times in a day listen to this I want to I'm want, I want to take the time to read this Psalm 91 verses 1 through 16 he who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty I will say to the Lord my refuge and my fortress my God in whom I trust for it is he who delivers you from the snare of the fowler or the trapper and from the deadly pestilence he will cover you with his pinions and under his wings you may seek refuge his faithfulness is a shield and a bulwark you will not be afraid of the terror by night or the arrow that flies by day of the pestilence that stalks in darkness or of the destruction that lays at waste at noon a thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not approach you. You will only look on it with your eyes and see the recompense of the wicked, for you have made the Lord my refuge, even the Most High, your dwelling place. Have you made the Lord your refuge? Have you made him your dwelling place? No evil will befall you, nor will any plague come near your tent. For he will give angels charge concerning you to guard you in all your ways. And they will bear you up in their hands, lest you strike your foot against a stone. You will tread upon the lion and the cobra, and the young lion and the serpent. You will trample down. Because he has loved me, therefore I will deliver him, and I will set him securely on high. Because he has known my name. He will call upon me and I will answer and I will be with him in trouble and I will rescue him and honor him. And with a long life I will satisfy him and let him behold my salvation. 
I don't know about you, but when I read those words, they're so sweet to me. About a great God who is very near to his people. You see, sometimes our feelings, our emotions are like the clouds that we've had the last few, some days. The clouds that just hovered so, so low and the cold and it felt like the sun would never shine again. But now look outside. The sun is shining and the trees are budding and the grass is turning green. And for some of you, you've felt like you've been in a winter season. Life has hit you hard and it feels like the sun will never shine again. I have a word for you and I believe this word is from God. If you will put your complete hope and trust in God, if you will follow Him, if you will do what the writer says, the name of the Lord is a strong tower, and the righteous run into it, and they are saved. If you will do that, if you will make the name of the Lord like a strong tower, if you will run to Him when you hurt. My mom used to have this saying, and I know a lot of other people have pinned it, but it's this. I prayed through. Prayed through. How many of you know what praying through means? The church of Jesus Christ needs to get back to understanding what praying through means. And that means getting on our knees and finding us a place somewhere where if somebody seen you, they wouldn't think you were going off. So who cares about that? You know what? When you hurt bad enough, you really don't care. When you know that you're at a place that you can get what you need. That's what... Thank God we've been liberated from a lot of that here. Yes, we've been liberated from a lot of that here. Because you cry and you pray and you call out to God and, and you get in the altar and you seek the Lord and you get your breakthrough. If we would have more breakthroughs in, in church and in our altars at home, we wouldn't have the breakdowns in other places. But it's because we don't have the breakthrough in prayer. We need breakthrough. Praise God. God is a very present help in the time of need. He is our helper. We have a God who cares. Just because you cannot feel him, it doesn't mean that he is not there. The clouds, the, old, the, 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 the emotions and, and our fear and our feelings, and all those feelings sometimes can cloud uh, us from feeling that we can touch him. But we need to be like the woman who had the issue of blood. You know what? I'm sure that she was looked on negatively as she was pressing through the crowd. And uh, some thought she were unclean according to the law. But she didn't care what people thought. She said, if I can touch the hem of his garment, I know I'll be made whole. And that's, that's the mindset we have to have. We have to ha have the mindset when we're going to pray through. If I touch the hem of his garment, I know that I will be made whole. God is a very present help in our time of trouble, in our time of need. And it doesn't cost you any money. It will cost your humility. And it will cost casting your care on him and, and releasing it to him. And quit trying to do it your own way, fixing it your own in your own strength. You know what? We can work ourselves to death. We can, we can lie awake at night doing the rabbit trail. I know. We've all been there. And sometimes, you know, even people like me, I'm there. And then I have to jerk myself back into the biblical perspective of God is my God. And give these things to God. We all have burdens, right? Yeah, we all have burdens. Being a Christian doesn't mean that you won't have burdens or trials but what it does mean is we have one that we can run to the righteous run into it and they are safe we run to God with our with our issues now that doesn't mean that you don't go to to a, a counselor or a friend or a pastor that doesn't mean that at all God has all of these things set so that we can get help in our time of need as well and God works through all of those things but but those things are not a, a, not a substitute for getting what we need to get from God. Amen? We've got some counselors in here this morning. And we all, we all know that if we, there are some things you can only get from God. That, the peace that can, 
we can talk to somebody's head but God can talk to our heart we can we can put our embrace around someone and we do that I believe in that but God can massage you on the inside and hug you where nobody else can and he can put his sweet face up against yours and he can heal you everywhere you hurt you say well how do you know because I've been there I've been there when it feels like everything is falling apart we perhaps we all have been there but you see we've learned that our foundation is sure we're standing on a solid rock there's a there's a lot of things people try to stand on and they lean on right and we fall why because they're not secure but God is secure when we're pursued by the, by the enemy or confounded by the pressures of life, the people of God can flee to the indestructive fortress and we know we are safe. It doesn't matter how big our giant is. God is bigger. What is your problem today? What is your situation? What are you feeling confounded about? God is bigger. What is your dilemma? God knows the way through. I think I remarked to Melanie this morning that, you know, God tells us there's all kinds of stuff in the, in the scripture that, you know, how Christians are supposed to live and what we're to do and things that we're not to do. And some people sometimes make that about, that's about our salvation. Sometimes it's not so much about your salvation because salvation comes by faith through the grace of God, right? It's free gift of God. That's salvation. But a lot of times we can have salvation and our life is in such a, a shamble. Why? Because we ignore the word of the Lord. We ignore the, the, uh, the wisdom of God in the word of God. And if we will learn the word of God and put it into practice through the strength of God, then we can get our life fixed and get on a better path. That's what God wants. God wants us to have a better path. So those things that seems like, well, you know what? I don't want to do that, God. Do it anyway because it's for your good. God never, he's not trying to get something good away from us. He's trying to get something good to us. So he, he tells us this and this and this to do. And a lot of times we fight against him. Because we're of the opinion that, that you know, he's just trying to get good from us. Or else we, sometimes we get under such condemnation because we, we start thinking it's about our salvation. Well, you know, if you don't have the joy of the Lord, then you don't have strength. And you don't have strength, you, you know... After a while, you're going to fall. Amen. All right, let's read 2 Samuel chapter 22 and verse, verse uh, 1 and following. David, he gave praises to God because God delivered him from his enemies. How many of you have read, in, uh, read about David's life and you find that David had a lot of issues, didn't he? David got himself into some messes. Maybe that's why we like David so well, because we get messes too, huh? <laughs> but David had a lot of messes. He didn't do everything perfect. He was a man after God's own heart, but he didn't do everything perfect. In fact, sometimes he made some pretty bad blunders, and a lot of times he did things that's like, oh my goodness, what a man of God. <laughs> such, is, such is Christianity, right? <laughs> Let's read. David spoke the words of this song to the Lord in the day that the Lord delivered him from the hand of all his enemies and from the hand of Saul. And he said, The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my rock, in whom I take refuge, my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold and my refuge, my Savior. Thou dost save me from violence. I call on the Lord who is worthy to be praised, and I am saved from my enemies. The waves of, the waves of death encompassed me, the torrents of destruction overwhelmed me. The cords of Sheol surrounded me. The snares of death confronted, uh, confounded me. In my distress, I called on the Lord. Yes, I cried to God. And from his temple, he heard me. And my cry for help came into his ears. Somebody needs to write that down, and you need to read that this week. David was there. He felt what you felt. Many others that we read about in the Word of God has been in similar situations, had the similar thoughts and emotions and feelings that you have. But David said, I called on the Lord. The waves of death encompassed me. The torrents of destruction overwhelmed me. The cords of Sheol, 
he felt like he was being pulled down into the pit. Do you know what I'm saying? You ever, you ever felt like that you were being pulled down into this deep, dark pit that sucked your life out of you? That's where David was. But he said, I called to God. And from his temple, he heard my voice. My cry came into his ears. I'm telling you this morning, when you're crying to God, your cry has entered into the ears of the Lord. So we learn God both in good times and bad times. Because if we didn't have a problem, if we didn't have trials, we wouldn't know that God delivers not from experience. If we didn't have sickness and sorrow, how would we know that God is a healer and comforter? Right? Don't just ask for an easy path. Ask for sufficient grace. Right? Ask for power. The power of his resurrection. Ask that you may know him, yes, in the power of his resurrection and in the fellowship of his suffering. Because it's in the fellowship of his suffering that we become strong. I, I do not believe that we grow the, the strongest and the fastest when the sun is shining and everything is bright. But it's in the valley. It's in the deep, deep valley where our soul is in heartache. And we have no one that can give us the relief that we need. But we go to God because his name's a strong tower and we learn him. We learn that he loves us. We learn that he hears us. You say, well, he doesn't come when I cry to him. He's working when you don't even know it. He doesn't always make himself visible and feelable. I love feeling God's presence. But can I tell you, there's a lot of times I don't feel God's presence. But we walk by faith, not by feeling. And we speak the word of the Lord. We speak what is right concerning God. He is a refuge for us. And we need to speak that. He is a tower of strength against our enemies. The righteous, if the righteous people of God would run to God as one runs to a high tower of safety, they would be saved. How does one run to God? We bow our hearts before him in honor, humility, obedience, and total faith. And we cast our care upon him. We surrender ourselves to the Lord. I ask you today, is there something that you need to surrender? You see, sometimes we go to God and we're crying, God, fix this, fix this, fix this. And God's saying, give it to me. And if you give it to him, he'll fix it. That thing that you may be holding on to may be the source of your problem. You say, well, I can't figure it. Well, you don't have to. But if God says, give it to me, it's because he's wanting to get good to you. So if you release to God what he asks, he'll help you. We bow our hearts and surrender to him. There's an old hymn that we used to sing years ago, and probably a lot of you have heard this song. Take your burden to the Lord and leave it there. I want to read, uh, I want to read the lyrics of this song. If the world from you withhold of its silver and our, its gold, and you have to get along with meager fare, just remember in his word how he feeds the little bird. Take your burdens to the Lord and leave it there. If your body suffers pain and your health you can't regain, and your soul is almost sinking in despair, Jesus knows the pain you feel. He can save and he can heal. Take your burden to the Lord and leave it there. If you, when your enemies assail and your heart begins to fail, don't forget God in heaven answers prayer. He will make a way for you and will lead you safely through. I said he will lead you safely through. Take your burden to the Lord and leave it there. When your youthful days are gone and old age is stealing on and your body bends beneath the weight of care, he will never leave you then. He'll go with you to the end. Take your burden to the Lord 
and leave it there. You see, we are apt to forget to take our burdens to the Lord. Sometimes we have become so self-sufficient, so independent. We strive in our own efforts and we forfeit, for, forfeit the peace and the grace and the results that God wants to give us. And sometimes God will just let us work and fight and fuss and fume until we get tired and we, we give up. And he's like, okay, finally. You know what I'm saying? You ever, you ever had God to do that? You ever just, has, have you ever just had times where you, <laughs> you lost something? And you search the house up one side, down the other, outside, in the car, under the seats, here and there. And you just pray, God, help me. God, I've got to have some help. Would you just tell me where this is? And just a little bit, you just, it just like spoke in your spirit. And you went, and there it was. And it was there all the time. You see, God is that way with all things. He's waiting on us to say, help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Can you say that with me this morning? With whatever it is you need. Help me, Lord. Help me, God. Give me strength. Give me what I need, God. And now when you say that, then be willing to whatever he says to do. You see, we can say, God, help me. Where, where is it? Where is it? What do I, what, where did I put it? And he says, well, over there, you put it on that table and it fell behind the couch, so look there. But, but sometimes what we do is, well, help me, Lord. Well, help me, Lord. And we never go and do what he says to find the answer. Right? So when you, we say, help me, Lord, then his help is helping you to know the path to take. Run to the Lord. We're apt to forget our burdens and become self-sufficient. So who or what are you trusting in? Oh, we've probably all done this, yes? You've done that before? Have you ever done that and somebody tricked you? you? They said, yeah, fall back, I'll catch you. And they tricked you. Well, you want to be careful who you do that with. But God's not going to do that. God's not going to say, lean on me and then let you fall. Right? Psalm 20 and verse 7 and 8. I'm trying to hurry here. Some, tr some boast in chariots. Some in horses. But we will boast in the name of the Lord. Our God. They have bowed down and fallen. But we have risen and stood upright. So who are you trusting in? Are you trusting in your own might and your strength and, and the chariots and horses of the world? Or are you trusting in God? Have you ever trusted in someone they failed you? Of course you had. Jesus told a story about a person who trusted in himself and his wealth. And he said that he, he built his life. Basically, he said there's, there's like two people. One that goes out and he builds his house on the sand, right? And another one builds his house on on a rock and the storm comes to the person that has the house on the sand and grates the fall of it storm comes to the person who who builds his house on the rock and he stands strong you see that's the difference the storms are going to come to all of us while we're in this world whether we're a Christian or a non-Christian but the difference is is are you building your house on a rock or a sand? If you're following the commands of the Lord, you're building your house on the rock. If you know Jesus as your Savior and you're building your life by Him, through Him. This is a scripture that I felt very strongly and I do need to read it, even if I do cut off some of this message. By the way, I did clip out a whole lot of it already. Proverbs 25 and 19 like a bad tooth and an unsteady foot is confidence in a faithless man in the time of trouble. I love those proverbs like that. 
by you trusting in something or someone that's independable. But we trust in our God and through his unfailing love. We will not be shaken. The storms may come, the winds may blow, and they will. The rains will come, and they'll beat up against your house. But we will not be shaken because we trust in our God. Amen. Amen. You know what happens when you trust in a bad tooth to do its job. You bite down, you're going to try to use it, and you have great pain, right? <laughs> we probably all had that before. You know what happens when you trust in somebody that has an unsteady foot? Yeah. You fall down, you suffer great injury. Yeah, we've all had that. Let's not try to substitute human strength or stuff or our strength for the strength of God. You can have what God says you can have. And you can do what God says you can do. You can if you put your trust in God. Whose report are you going to believe? You need to believe the Lord's report. I'm going to skip, skip over. Actually, no, I'm not. Can you give me a little bit more time? In the book of Numbers, God had already told his people, he had already promised them the promised land, the land that was flowing with milk and honey. You can read about this in the book of Numbers around 13. He had already promised them the land flowing with milk and honey where there was, there was wells that they didn't dig, there were houses there that they didn't build, uh, and, and the blessings of the Lord. It was a fertile place. And they had, they had been in Egyptian bondage. It was, a hard, it was a hard thing. It was a hard time. But God sent the deliverer, Moses. And Moses led them. And now Joshua is leading them. And um, there's, they, he sends the spies over, ten spies over, to spy out the land. Not to spy out the land to see whether they could take the land. God had already told them the land was theirs. You see, we make a mistake when, when we put if in front of God's yes. There's no ifs with God. When God says we can, we can. And God had already told them the land was theirs. However, they were to go in and conquer and possess the land. Well, the spies went out, ten spies, and the eight of them came back, and they were overwhelmed because they saw big giants over there with muscles and, and uh, probably uh, six fingers because a lot of the giants had six fingers instead of five and six toes instead of five, on, well, on each hand and each foot. <laughs> and they were huge. And uh, no doubt, you know, the children of Israel felt very inferior. They felt very weak. They felt like, how can we do this? But you see, when you look at your strength and your ability and you try to sum up, can I do it or not? Yeah. Then you're going to get into a mess because you're reverting back to trying to use, uh, trying to chew with a broken tooth. Right? You're trusting in your own strength and you're going to fall if you're trusting in your own strength and your own ability. And so the eight of those spies said, we can't. There are giants over there. And guess what? Everybody, uh, everybody with the exception of Joshua and Caleb, two of the spies that said, no, we're well able. Let's go take the land. They're going to be bread for us. God is for us. God's delivered us. And they probably recounted all the things that God had done or many of the things that God had done and said, look, we didn't think we could do that, but we did because God was with us. And if we trust God and God's for us, we can do it. But you know what the people did? They listened to the eight spies that had a negative report and they became discouraged and they became disheartened why because they didn't trust in God and if you and I look at at our strength and our ability and our circumstances then we're going to be overwhelmed we're going to be discouraged and we're going to be defeated but God is calling us this morning don't look at things just at what you see 
look at what the promise of God is. Has God given you a promise? God's given me some promises. Here's a 40-year promise, almost 40 years, almost 40 stinking years. Not all stinking, but 40 years. And, and uh, I, I, I kissed a toad, and now I have a prince. <laughs> I couldn't do it, and he couldn't do it, but God did it. God's awesome. God is awesome. And I don't know what you need this morning, but God is awesome. And God is bigger than your problem. He's bigger than your situation. He's bigger than what you can or cannot see. And we need to make up our mind right now and get a resolve that we are not looking at our situation. Because if you look at your, your situation, some of you have got some situations in your life. And if you look at your situation, you're going to be dis in despair you're going to feel defeated. You're going to feel all I can't. And, and you're just going to feel so discouraged. But if you look to God, and if you will put your faith in God, God will absolutely see you through. God will see you out. God will give you a miracle. God will bring a restoration. God will bring a healing. God will bring a deliverance. What is it that God can't do? He asked the question, is anything too big for God? Now, what if those, what if those 10 spies went over there and said, yeah, boy, them, they, there were some big men over there. But that's no problem with God. Because God has already brought us through. Well, we remember when Pharaoh was marching, uh, marching after us and we had the Red Sea in front of us and we knew we couldn't build a boat fast enough and we surely couldn't swim through there. But, but God came and he parted the water. He, he brought miracles and we walked through on dry ground. Brothers, did you know it wasn't even damp? It wasn't even wet. It was dry ground. We walked through there. We didn't even get our feet wet. Why? Because God is our God. Because God was for us. What if they had said that? These big old men over there, they ain't nothing. They're going to be our bread. We're going to overcome. We're going into the land. We're going we're gonna to possess the land that God's given us. God already said it was ours, and we're going to take it. Praise be to God. What if they'd have come back and said that? But they didn't. And you know who went in? You know who went in of that generation? Two, Joshua and Caleb. And the Bible says that the rest of that generation, all of those, they died off, and God raised up another generation. Listen, God is not wanting to have to raise up somebody else to do what he wants you to do he, and to give what he wants to give. God wants you to be possessors of what he is offering you. When God says you can, you can. That settles it. How many of you would stand and say, I'm going to take that as God's word this morning? I want you to stand. If you're going to take that as God's word, if you feel like you've heard from God this morning and you're going to take that as God's word, that God says, I can, I've heard the Lord's word this morning and I'm going to trust in him and I'm going to do what he says I, I, I should do and I will have the victory. How many of you are going to do that? We trust in God. We trust in God. We trust in God. And through his unfailing love, we will not be shaken. Though the earth be removed, though it be cast into the, to the uh, sea, whatever, we will not be shaken. We just need to sing that again, can you? Can you sing that again? Can, can we put that up there real quickly, Brenda? We will not be shaken. I know it's getting late, but hey, you can go home and grieve if you have to, or you can go home and rejoice. But you need to start saying what God said. Do you hear me? I need to just really quickly say, say this. Job, I was really trying to cut this, this sermon shorter so I could stay in a time limit, but y'all be okay. Okay, Job, remember Job. Job had suffered Horrible stuff, unimaginable stuff. Lost his family, lost his health, lost his wealth. He still had his wife. She was grouchy. But I'd have been grouchy too if I'd probably been through all she'd been through. It was a tough time for Job. And all of his friends, they, they had all kinds of opinions of all the reason all this stuff happened. But they were not hitting it right. You know, sometimes people think they know what they don't know. And they give opinions about things they need to just be, be still on. Because there's some things we just don't know why it happens. 
Are you with me? There are some things that happens to us. There's no rhyme or reason that we can understand. And we don't have to understand. We just need to hold his hand. But, but I wanted to say this. Because you need to hear this. Somebody needs to hear this. The Bible says that Job spoke what was right concerning God. Job spoke what was right concerning God. Joshua and Caleb spoke what was right concerning God. You look at the great people of God who have done great things in God's name, and their talk would match their walk. We need to get our mouth lined up with what God says is ours. And when God gives us a promise, we need to stand on it. I, I never said if for my 40-year miracle. I never said if. There were times I said, oh God, how long? <laughs> but never did I ever say if. You don't have to say if. You say what God has said. And if God has given you a promise this morning, if you've heard the word of the Lord this morning and God's touched your heart with it, you need to make your stand 